Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Ryan Fenners. Welcome back to the Fentertainment channel. On today's video, we're going to be installing some electric locks and a keyless entry system into my pickup truck today. This is a very universal application and everything that I'm going to do on my truck, I'm going to kind of show you how you can use it for your vehicle as well. There's a lot of tips that's been left out in other videos I've seen floating around YouTube and I hope to clarify as much of those as possible. When you open your kit, you're gonna have two key fobs. The key fobs feel real good. The buttons do not feel all cheap and uh, plastic key. They actually feel really good. So the batteries are already installed in here and they do come with leather straps. I cut my leather strap off of this one and just installed a regular key ring. You're gonna have four actuators. This is an actuator but this is your main actuator here because it has more wires than normal. And you're gonna use this one like on your driver's side door here. These other actuators are your side doors and your rear doors. They have two wires, just a blue and a green. This is the brain to the system. It's very small, so you can hide this underneath the dash or in another uh, hiding location underneath your vehicle so you don't see. Don't cut this. This is actually the antenna for the keyless entry system. This is your wiring harness. This looks like a whole lot of mess if you're looking at this right here for the first time, but it's not, trust me. Next up, we have mounts. These are mounts that will go onto the door and the actuator will actually screw onto the mount here. So this is the bag of parts that connects your rod here to your existing rod. This is the hardware that attaches these rods here with your existing rods inside your vehicle. And here's your wiring diagram for how to install this keyless entry system. Okay, so when you're installing your actuators inside of your doors, your door panel is going to remove. There's going to be screws. There's going to be covers. There might be some screws behind some light switches or some some light plates um there's just be sure to take it off like on this truck here once you get everything apart the door panel slides up before it slides out so just don't once you have everything just don't just go yanking on it and also search the internet about how to take your door panel apart as well but this right here i want to go ahead and show you this right here the uh manual window lever this is the lever that goes on here to roll your window up and down now on this lever a lot of people don't show you this online is there's a clip right here so this is really what i want to show you here this is the piece that rolls your window up and down if you have manual windows and nine times out of ten if you have manual door locks you may have manual windows this clip here is going to hold this right here piece on but a lot of times on these videos, they don't show you actually how to remove this right here lever. And I'm gonna show you that. But first of all, we're gonna actually install the little clip inside of the lever itself. And this right here will be useful for when you're reinstalling it. So it's, it's on there, it's not coming out, you can't drop it out or anything. And basically you just take it and push it on here. Okay, so it's not gonna come off of here. Once it's on here, it's not gonna come off until you remove that clip. But basically, you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your, a flathead screwdriver, or like in this case, this is called a crow's foot. It's actually a door panel removal tool. It just gets in there and wedges certain, certain stuff behind door panels. And we're going to take that into the clip itself. We always want to put your hand below where you're working because these little clips tend to fly off if not. And that one just did. Actually, it's on the ground, but there's my window crank. So you're going to have to do that in that order before you remove your door panel so just note these right here just don't slide on and off that easily okay so before you take your door panel off there's another thing you want to look at and find your lock switch or your lock lever usually it's going to be over here in the corner by the uh, edge of the door it's going to go up and down 
In this case, mine on this truck is actually here, the top in the middle. And when it's in the door panel, you push it one way and it locks, you push it the other way and it unlocks. Now, why I'm showing you this is this right here is the rod that you want to connect to. This is the rod that goes to your lock mechanism from your lock lever. That's what your actuator is going to control. Your actuator is not going to control this. If you put it on this, you ever seen the, the cars with the shaved door handles and you wonder how they got in? They had actually a high powered actuator that would clip here and it would pull the door handle open and there was a spring like in the door jam and it would push the door open. So you don't want to connect it here. You want to connect it to the door lock lever itself. So like we mentioned earlier, this is your door lock actuator. And I'm going to show you how to assemble it before you find a mounting location for your vehicle. So you take your door actuator, you take your rod provided. Your rod slides in one way. As you can tell, one way has been notched. So it will not slide out the other end of the actuator. So once you have your rod on, you have your attachment point. This little attachment point here has three screws in the top of it. Two of the screws is going to attach to the existing rod in the vehicle. And the one screw on one side of it by itself is going to slide onto the actuator rod. So it's going to look like this. Okay, now depending on where you need to put it at is depending on where you mount the actuator. Now before you mount the actuator just anywhere, make sure on the door panel that you're going to have enough room to mount the actuator. You don't want to mount it somewhere, go to put the door panel on and then the door panel hits it. This rod is designed to be bent so you can bend this rod very easily. A pair of channel lock pliers or some regular pliers can bend it. And you can also bend it with your hands as well. So we need to find a mounting spot for the actuator and how are we going to attach it to this right here spot here. Okay, so I have the actuator mounted and I have it attached here to the rod. And I wanted to make sure that it was as parallel to the same motion as this rod here. You can test this with a nine volt battery you blue and your green wires so you just go positive and negative positive and negative switch the battery around let's unlock let's lock unlock lock unlock lock you get the adjust of that also i mounted it with the window all the way down and i did that because i wanted to make sure i have enough room inside of this uh, gap here to mount it so it doesn't interfere with anything. On my truck, I also removed the door handle to open it. I wanted to make sure I had everything covered, all my bases covered as far as mounting location for the actuator itself. Now we're gonna take the wires and run the wires through the door jam into the door here to connect all the wires. I did make a slit in this plastic. I don't really like to remove the plastic from around everything because generally the glue doesn't re-stick as easy. So I did have to make a cut in here because I did drop this little piece uh, inside the door jam. That was a little aggravating, but I did this. I can just take some tape, tape it back up and go from there. Here's another tip. When running your door jam wires through the door jam itself, I run a piece of aluminum uh, metal uh, rod here. I don't really know what, exactly what you call it. I take one end and I bend a loop in it. And I do that for two reasons. The first reason is when I'm actually pushing it through the boot, this bent section here will not catch everything and it'll just slide across and go to the next part. Another reason is the wires, I can actually wrap the wires inside of this section and pull it out across the bottom here and go into the door so that's one other tip there about running wires through the door jam uh, don't let anybody tell you this is going to be a breeze because it's not uh, it's a little bit time consuming but in my opinion this looks better by going through the boot than just having wires exposed inside your door jams
All right, so on the wiring harness, you have a power and a ground wire. The ground wire is automatically going to come with a pre-installed ring terminal, so you can remove a bolt underneath the dash or around the engine bay somewhere, like this one back here, and you can slide the wire on, put the bolt back on, and the system will be grounded. Then you can run the power wire to a battery junction box like so, or to the battery positive terminal. Now, what I did on this truck here, is I went on the 12 volt.com, or you can go on modifiedlife.com and look up alarm installation guides. And what that does is it tells you certain wire color combinations under the dash and what they do. So what I, I grounded my um, ground underneath the dash and I tapped into a power wire underneath the dash. It took a little bit longer to do versus just running it through the firewall and attaching it to a couple of spots. If you do run it underneath the firewall, I would suggest picking up some split loom and run it in that and make it look nice and neat. Now the same goes for the lights. This truck here has a negative uh, light uh, signal underneath the dash and I use that with a relay to actually change the polarity from the positive trigger that the uh, keyless entry is providing to a negative and i'll try to throw up a uh, relay diagram of how you can do that as well but you can take those wires and you can run them down here into the headlight and find the uh, positive wire if you want to but like i said earlier i went with the a uh, little bit longer route and i think it's a little bit cleaner and i attach it underneath the dash and I use those links and I'll provide those links below. So if you have a negative trigger on your vehicle, you can use this right here, relay diagram and how you install it versus a positive trigger. Now, if you have a positive trigger, so much more easier, like I said, or you can just run the wire straight down here to your park lights and find which wire is, has 12 volt power when your light is on. Now, once you have everything installed properly, you go ahead and test the system. The top button is lock. Once you hit lock one time, the indicator lights will flash one time and the doors will lock. Once you hit the second button here for unlock, the indicator lights will flash two times, the doors will unlock. This system does not have any kind of light that goes on the dash, kind of like a alarm system. So you don't have to worry about that. This third button here is a trunk button. It works the same way. If you have a trunk popper already installed, this came from the factory that's electronic, you would just tap into those wires. If not, you would need to install a trunk popper similar to the way we did a door popper. So let's start here. We hit lock. Lights flash one time, the door locked. You can hear them lock. We hit unlock. The truck is now unlocked. Now, as you can see, we have the door panel back on. The wires are ran through the boot, so it looks much cleaner. The dash piece, everything's back together. Now, on the inside, once you hit lock, this right here locks. When you hit unlock, that's what it does.